from the Des Moines Register. What, what could fans notice different about Brees? I mean, what can he do to, you know, and, and what can he do to approve upon last year? Yeah, obviously we're excited about the year that Brees had. And, you know, coming off of a big year like that where, you know, he was a Heisman contender and, and did a bunch for us on the field, running the ball, catching the ball out of the backfield. Uh, the exciting part is we still feel like there's a lot of room for Brees to improve. And he feels the same way. Uh, I think he's really excited about really understanding the whole offense, really understanding what we're trying to do week in and week out, understanding how we're trying to attack teams. Um, I think that's a great area for him to grow. And he's been pressing himself in the film room, uh, obviously studying, you know, just just our stuff, our playbook, what goes on, and, and obviously even opposing defenses and how they tried to attack him last year. So I think from that knowledge standpoint, again, there's a lot of room to grow. And uh, again, the best part about Brees is that he's he's hungry for that growth. What about Jirel? Can you talk a little bit? Yeah, Jirel, uh, obviously last year for us, came in and played a big role. And the things that he was able to do for us on third down were, were big for our offense. He was really the guy that we relied on as a third down back. And you saw him go in there and make plays, uh, catch the ball out of the backfield, protect the quarterback, run the ball well. And so I think we continue to see him work in this offseason. Uh, the work that he's put in with our strength staff has been really, you know, even seeing his body and where it's at two years later, uh, it's been really impressive. And so I think, you know, now knowing that Kane, uh, you know, ha has graduated and, and moved on, uh, for him to now step into a role where, you know, we can rely on him even more. And again, it, it works in, in small bits with us. You know, you, you prove that trust with, with every opportunity you get. And I think with him, uh, we, we reflect back on last year and felt like he proved a lot to us in, in what he can do on our offense. Thanks, Nate. No problem. Hey, Nate, Travis Hines, the Ames Tribune here. How are you? What's up, Travis? I'm good. Glad to hear it. Just wanted to get kind of your evaluation to switch gears a little bit of the wide receiver group, what you guys were able to do last year and it was so much coming back, what you feel like it can do this year. Yeah, we were excited about our year um, overall as an offense and obviously the role that the wideouts played within that. I think, you know, you got to start off with Xavier and the year that he had last year coming in as the, you know, Big 12 newcomer of the year and the work that he did on the field and the work that he did behind the scenes that allowed him to reach that. Uh, it, it was really exciting. And then obviously having a group around him uh, that continued to contribute in different ways. And um, what we try to do on offense is make things really difficult on defenses by sending in different personnel and, and putting in different guys and putting them in different positions and trying to create matchups. And so uh, we were really encouraged by, you know, where those guys came in. And obviously the exciting part, like you alluded to, is that we do get a lot of those guys back. And so, you know, we've seen those guys come back with um, a hunger and a passion to grow uh, and, and to be more productive and to be, you know, not only a year older when they're out there on the field this next year, uh, but to be a whole lot better players. And so um, those guys have worked hard this offseason and, you know, continue to see those guys uh, grow and develop. X had such a great year last year and was you know, such a huge part for your group. Is that, are you okay with, I guess, the distribution of catches where, you know, he kind of outsizes everybody or would you like to see the, the supporting cast be more part of that? And I know Tariq's injuries probably played a, a role in that as well. Yeah. You know, our offense uh, is into one thing, moving the ball down the field and scoring points. And as far as distribution and what that looks week in and week out, We've done it a lot of different ways. You know, we've had games in the past where one guy has caught 10 balls. We've had games where 10 guys caught one ball. And so um, I, I definitely don't think you can take away from the work that Xavier put in. You know, I, coming in on a year where there was a pandemic, he, he did have to put in a lot of work. I remember uh, last year around this time, you know, he's, he's doing Zoom calls with me in his garage, just trying to figure out how to get lined up in our offense and what the plays are and, and how he can better himself while he was away from us. So he did put in a lot of work. And, and so um, I, I think what he's shown, uh, obviously he's, he's earned the right to get the ball thrown to him. And, and that's always how it works. You, you earn that ability to be trusted by the offensive coordinator, by the quarterback. Um, and, and again, I think we've got a lot of guys who can do that. And like you said, injuries played a little bit of a role there, um, but, but just continuing to work, I think for all those guys uh, will allow those opportunities to even grow in the future.
for Tariq healthy, what does he bring to your to your group? Yeah, I'm excited about getting Tariq uh, back healthy. You know, Tariq has been an explosive player here. He's made a ton of plays down the field. Uh, he, he's a guy that, man, he, he can go and threaten people and he can threaten them with his speed and his ability to make plays with the ball in his hand. And so getting him back healthy is going to be huge for our offense. And again, he, he did a lot of work last year just to get himself back. So he was available at the end of the season and, and really made some big plays for us. I, I look back at that Texas game and the plays that he made, um, you know, catching short stuff and, and gaining yards for us. That first third down that that he got out there in the flat was huge for our offense. And so um, you, you saw him do that and saw him get back to himself as that year went on. But but obviously it was a difficult year. You know, he, he went a stretch of games where he wasn't available. And so that's that's really hard. But uh, he, he is also really, really excited to be a big weapon in this offense. And I think he's a guy that, you know, Brock has relied on. He's thrown big plays to him down the field. And, you know, again, he's a guy that that definitely makes defensive backs back up. And anytime you got those guys out on the field, uh, it, it's going to make things a lot easier for even the other guys on your offense. Thank you, Nate. No problem. Hey, Nate, this is Matt Bellinson from the Iowa State Daily. Just following up on Tariq, if you can, um, what specific injuries was uh, was he dealing with last year? And if so, uh, did any of those require surgery? I know in some games he had a slain on, I think maybe his left arm or something like that. And also had to deal with some lower leg injuries. That's right. He had an ankle injury early, um, and then really just had a, a collarbone issue uh, that, that happened really in the Oklahoma game, that first one that he came back from. He, he hit a big play for us, uh, hit a big game, um, but only played in a few plays because he hurt it on that play. And so uh, it, it wasn't anything that we felt like. Obviously, he came back last year and was healthy uh, at the end of the season. And again, feeling like even in this offseason, it hasn't necessarily been something that he's had to you know, put extra rehab time into, but, but he does feel like, man, his work with coach Andrews and their staff down in the weight room that that can continue to help him um, just be available uh, as much as possible going into this next year. What do you anticipate uh, seeing from a guy like Sean Shaw, uh, especially like you said, with, you know, a lot of guys returning and he obviously didn't have as much production as a guy like X. Um, but I think in spurts last year, he came up with a lot of big catches and obviously only finished the year with one touchdown. But what do you expect from him this year? You know, you said it. The encouraging part about Sean is that you're right. It, it didn't necessarily uh, maybe go the way that he expected early on and that, man, he probably wished he had opportunities to make more plays or would have made more plays early on. But I think you just saw his consistency and that he came to work every day with the same mentality, the same attitude. And because of that, you know, again, that Texas game, he's he's the one that kind of got us going there on that right sideline and made a big play for us. And um, that's that's the mentality that he has, that he's going to come to work each day. Uh, he doesn't have a uh, an expectation other than he's going to put forth his best effort and he's going to go to work, um, you know, and, and do what he can in our offense to continue to make plays. But uh, again, this offseason has been big for him. He still has a ton of stuff that he can work on and in always with with bigger guys man there's a lot that you can work on with with your feet and, and route running that can continue to help you but he's a matchup problem man he's out there and he's six foot six he can jump he's got great ball skills and so uh, again continuing to see him develop in this offense um you know he, he's a nightmare for smaller dbs thanks nate this is jared stansbury with cyclone fanatic um obviously we know a lot about Tariq, uh sean and um, and X, but are there any younger guys that you've seen jump out to you? Maybe, you know, even your early enrollees or guys who redshirted last year or whatever? Yeah, there's a few of those guys. You know, we, we've we been out on the field with them for a week now. And again, seeing that work that they've put in the weight room really coming into life out on the field has been encouraging. You know, I think of a guy like, you know, Easy Anderson. And again, he's up about 15 pounds from this offseason. And, and really done a good job out on the field. And he's a guy that provides really a physical mentality when he's out on the field uh, and, and really has some of that playmaking ability. So so getting him and, and seeing him develop has been great. You know, Joe Skates was a big play guy for us last year. I think, you know, led our team in, in you know, most yards per catch. And so he's a guy that obviously can threaten people and can put pressure on DBs in a hurry, uh, which has been good. And then, yeah, those old early enrollees have been uh, really good, I think. You know, to be honest with you, Jalen's had a good first week of practice and, um, you know, he 
he has that maturity about him and, you know, is really passionate about finding ways to get better. He was that way in his recruitment. Uh, you know, when you, when you sat and you talked to him and the questions that he asked, you know, he, he felt like he was mature beyond his years. And so even as he's come in uh, to the fold and, and been down in the weight room and out on the field, you know, he, he's kind of got that look in his eye that, you know, he's here to do something. And so I think anytime you, you add guys in like that, it's going to be good for the room. It's going to be good for the, the team in general. Hey, uh, Nate, it's, it's Bill at Cyclone Report. Uh, two, two other guys, uh, along with uh, Jared's question, I wanted you uh, to see if you had some comments on were uh, Daniel Jackson, Aiden Bitter, a couple of uh, those receivers that actually got some time last season. What have you seen from them uh, getting a, a full spring in this year? Yeah, it's been great to work with those guys this offseason and, and them going through their first spring ball. You know, Daniel really uh, made some contributions to the offense last year before, you know, he had an injury that, uh, you know, ended his season and stuff. And so I, I think with him, you, you got a big physical guy that uh, really can play on the outside, can play on the inside. And so he he has the ability to move around. And that's what we've been doing even in this offseason is, is moving around and and seeing where he fits best in our offense. Um, but really like the the growth that Daniel has had, um, you know, and, and with Aiden Bitter, uh, you know, the, the mentality that he brings to work every day. Uh, he made a contribution on special teams last year for us. He was a guy that you felt like you could trust to go in at uh, really all three receiver positions. And so, you know, with, with his ability to understand our offense, with his ability to impact the game on special teams, He'll, contrib he'll contribute in a number of different ways. You, you feel like it's a guy you don't know exactly when that's going to be, um, but he's a guy that we can trust and rely on. And, um, you know, both those guys really have good hands. And anytime you have that, you're going to have a role. With Daniel, what was the injury that he had and, and kind of what was the rehab process with that where, he, where he's at right now? Yeah, he had a foot injury that, that took him out. And, you know, he's back up and running. And, and again, um, I feel like knocking the rust off just a little bit right now, but we're, we're really excited about him and, and, and felt like even last year, had he been healthy, he was a guy that uh, really could have been a big uh, piece of our offense and, and a guy that, again, with, with his ability to play inside and outside, um, his size, his ability to go up and get the ball, you know, we, we feel like he can step into a big role uh, throughout his career. And so he, he's been good back out on the field. And again, just getting his feet back underneath him now, um, but but a highly talented kid who, who really cares about the game. Thanks. No problem. Hi, Nate. This is Michael Swain from 24-7 Sports. I'm just curious for you personally, taking on now role of running backs coach and wide receivers coach, um, what is that like for you during practice? I know you've only had a week of kind of balance in both of them, but what's that been like for you in practice and I guess working with the guys off the field as well? Yeah, you know, it's, it's been awesome. Uh, you know, even even this offseason, as we were thinking about it and just, you know, having the ability in the past to work with the running backs, having the ability, obviously, these last couple of years of working with the receivers. And uh, one of the things we talk about the most in our program is alignment and how we can all be on the same page. And it's really important for us on offense to all be on the same page, obviously, as coaches, but as players as well. And so, whereas in the past, you know, there, there's obviously been, you know, messages that, that are similar, but um, obviously have a little bit of difference between, you know, the running back room and the receiver room and how those guys relate and how running backs fit into uh, our past concepts and how receivers are expected to block for, for the run game and being able to really uh, be on the same page with that, I think can be really helpful. And again, I, I look at it as a great opportunity to bring those things together and, and to be more on the same page. And yeah, you're right. Uh, practices and, and meetings and, and those things, they, they get a little bit busy at times. Um, but we've got a great staff here. You know, we've got a great staff, you know, from Coach Campbell all the way down uh, th that is really able to help and able to, um, you know, share their experiences and share what they feel like is best, even within those position groups and how it fits within our offense and within our program, uh, which, is, which is really helpful. Thank you. No problem. Okay. It's Randy again from the from the Des Moines Register. What about what about um, Deion Silas? What have you seen? What have you seen from him, and how does how does he fit into the to your operation? Yeah, Deion's a natural running back. You can tell he's been you know back running behind an offensive line for 
for a long time. And so, you know, even, even getting him out on the field and seeing what he does, he, he has a good feel for, you know, the run schemes that we're installing and he has a good feel for where he should fit out within that. And so it, it's been good to get him out there. I, I even feel like in the short amount of time that he spent down in our weight room that, you know, his, his body has really changed a lot in those first eight weeks. And so um, we're, we're excited about Dion. Dion's also got that personality and that charisma that you feel like just brings out the best in you and the best in others around uh, him. He, he's kind of that guy that, um, man, he can make just about anybody laugh. And, and so the more of the guys like that, that you have in your locker room, locker room that, that are really good football players, but also are just great to be around. That's, you know, again, that, that's what adds to the culture. And, and, you know, we talk about culture all the time and how important that is. Well, a lot of that goes on in the recruiting process and, and bringing the right guys into the building. And so, you know, Dion's for sure one of those guys. You're going to you're probably going to play three running backs, I'm guessing, maybe not, but but possibly um, also Eli Sanders. What are you expecting from him when, in fact, he gets to Ames? Well, yeah, I think you can look at Eli's track times right now and kind of see that uh, there, there's some excitement that I think we have to get um, that ability and that speed here. And, you know, he comes from a program and an offense that he's done a lot. They, they've required him to do a lot, to learn a lot. Um, you know, he's had to run routes from the backfield. He's had to run a number of different run schemes. Uh, he's had to pass protect. And so getting a guy like that who probably has some on the field maturity um, that's a little more advanced than, than your typical freshman, um, we are. We're really excited about getting Eli here. And again, you said it. Uh, we, we probably would play three. Man, we're, we're willing to play however many it takes for us to continue to move the ball down the field and score points. And um, I think the more guys that you have that you feel like they can go out on the field and execute uh, whatever assignment they may have, the better we're going to be as an offense. And so that, that's our goal with all of those guys. One last thing, one last thing for me. Why do you suspect that Jirel did not go into the portal? It seems like these days, you know it, you've been a player. Players go into the portal if they, if they see they're not going to play. Well, Brees is the number one running back at Iowa State and maybe in the nation. Jirel didn't go in the portal. What, what is it about him that, that he didn't do that? Yeah, I, it's a great question. And I think it's really two things. Um, the first I, I do, I think it says a lot about Jirel and who he is and what he's about. Uh, he's a hard worker and he is uh, the type of kid that when he comes in every day, he's not focused on what the depth chart looks like or how many touches he got the day before or what's he's focused on getting better and being the best version of himself. And so I, I think that's the first piece. And, and even the way that he was raised, he's got a great mom and dad. He comes from a great um, town in Quincy, Illinois. And so that stuff, uh, it, it's a big deal. It's a, it's a big deal to have that already ingrained in you. And then I think the second part is, again, we talk about the culture and, and when does the culture matter? Well, on the good days when you won the Fiesta Bowl and things are going well, you know, the, the culture is what it is. You know, that's a positive, but you, you don't need the culture on that. Uh, on the tough days where, man, you, you didn't get as many reps as you wanted or, man, it, it was a tough practice or it was a tough year. And, and man, I missed some time here and I thought I was going to do this, but I didn't get a chance. Those are the days that you need the culture and you need the people around you. Again, not, not for the great days where you're winning games and everybody's slapping you on the back and you scored a bunch of touchdowns, but on the days where it, it, it wasn't exactly what you expected, uh, that's what makes this program special. That's what makes Iowa State different is, um, it, it is what you feel behind closed doors on those tough days. Thanks, Nate. No problem. Nate, Heinz here again. I think the perception was last year that maybe one of the few things that your guys' offense didn't do consistently was stretch the field over the top with the wide receivers. And I guess, A, do you, was that perception reality? And B, is there something that you'd like to address this season or this offseason? I, I do think there's some reality uh, to that, to, um, and, and again, you said it earlier, but having some of those injuries to, to those guys and, you know, just how we were planning on playing the game. I think, again, it, it isn't us on offense just figuring out man, what's the, the fastest way to score? What's the, 
we're, we're trying to win a game as a program and how that looks week in and week out, it, it might be different. You know, there were games that, that we felt like we could push the ball downfield and that was what was going to be best for us. And there were games where we felt like, man, it was going to be good to create long, consistent drives where we could stay on the field. Um, but we could continue to hand the ball off to a Heisman candidate running back and, you know, throw it short and allow those guys to run after the catch. But at the same time, I think we are continuing to, to investigate ways of how we can push the ball down the field. And, and again, the number one way that you feel confident doing that is those guys showing up in practice and showing up, you know, in their moments that they have and making plays down the field. You know, you, you run as fast as you can, 40, 50 yards downfield and um, figure out where the ball at, is at and make a play over top of a DB. You know, th those things are difficult. And so for those guys to continue to understand that that is a skill, that is a craft that, you know, we all have to work on and we all have to get better at. Uh, so we do have the confidence going into the game that that's just a part of our offense. Thank you. Uh, hello, Nate. Uh, Sam Stuvey, Iowa State Daily. Um, I just want to get your thoughts on the depth uh, at wide receiver and what the competition has been like within that room. It's early to really uh, go through the entire depth. You know, we, we've had a few days out there. And to be honest with you, we're trying to train everybody in a number of different ways right now on the fundamentals and techniques that they can grow and get better at. And so we're having guys who have typically played on the outside work stuff on the inside and guys who have been on the inside work stuff on the outside and um, to continue to grow our special teams and, and move guys around in those ways. And so that's really what it's looked like from a, a program standpoint. And so it's, it's early to say, man, here's who I think are the ones and here's the twos and here's our rotation. We're a long ways away, but again, I, I'm really encouraged by the depth and, and by the amount of guys that we feel like can make plays for us, that can catch the ball, uh, that can block, that can do what is required to be a, a big time receiver here. Um, I, th I think the amount of guys that we have right now is probably more than it's ever been. Thank you. All right. That's all we have for you, coach. Thanks for your time. Awesome. Appreciate you guys.